It's Capital Extra. You have got Yinka with you, and I have got Mr. Still Your Girl, Trey Songs, in the studio. What's Can up? the studio crew please make some noise? Woo! Welcome, welcome. AKA all my friends. Yeah, but it's, it's good to have friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if not, it would just be producer Rob, and then he'll be like, woo, that's uh, by himself. Great. Oh, look at that. Rob, you're great. <laughs> I see you and Rob have a relationship where it's though you guys kind of just throw each other under the bus all day. Yeah, yeah, That's it's fun. like brother and sister. That's fun. <laughs> so how are you? Welcome to the UK. Thank you so much. How long has it been since you've, since since you've been, been here? Since I've been here last, it's probably like a year and a half. Actually. It's been a while, hasn't it? It is. Yeah. So do you, everyone always says that London is one of their favourite places. And I'm fishing now because obviously I'm a Londoner. Right. Is London one of your favourite places? Well, London's amazing. You know, uh, I think... Especially for me as a young artist, just remembering like London being like, like feeling when I touched down, like I made it like, wow, I'm in London, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it, it's definitely like a, a mecca of the world, especially for art and entertainment. Like I think people respect and appreciate music like to the, to the utmost. So that's always a dope film. It's one of those things where the U.S. has always kind of seemed so close to us even though you're so far away. Right. So even though you may not come here as much, we still kind of, like, follow you and see what you're doing and, like, all that sort of stuff, if you know what I mean. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I dig it. So earlier in the week, you um, came out at Drake's O2 London show. Yeah. How was that? Was it, was well, it fun? Everybody who came, came out to the show. It was a crazy energy in the show. Uh, performing was incredible. Uh, you know, seeing the show was incredible, but I had... I have to admit, the best part of my night was seeing Sade. Like I watched the whole, sh I watched the whole show like next to Sade. No way. Yeah, we got to like talk about the lights and like all type. She was giving me all type of like advice and just dropping gems left and right. Like it just was a, a, a incredible night. Not to mention Drake and I haven't probably performed together in like, I mean, like five years or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since you guys have have sort of like bit like graced Since's the stage yeah, together. Yeah. Was it was it nice sort of being reunited? Oh, it was super dope. It was crazy. The crowd went crazy. It was just, it was a good feeling. I can imagine. I can only imagine. You had your own show as well. Yeah, and well, uh, actually, you know, we, we stopped by tape and, you know, we good friends. <laughs> tape. Like, every time I'm in town, like, I stop through tape. Uh, they got the studio in the back. So yes, we they spent do. a little time in there as well. Uh, you know, and I, I love just being that close to the fans and really, like, being able to just, like, have an energetic, like, not cold rehearsed show like just yeah. turntables you know I know what you mean I want to say like man to man but obviously I'm a lady so that right, wouldn't yeah, make yeah, much you sense shouldn't say that. but like it probably weird me out yeah <laughs> Alright, so lady, so pretty, lady just be weird. Oh, babes. So lady to man, right? Right. How many girls wait for you outside? Because you know, I've seen a few of your music videos and a, <laughs> and a few a few times when you're on stage and stuff, and like the girls go absolutely sort of wild for you. Is it? Are you used to that now? Uh, I'm as as used to it as I am is something like you kind of never get used to. <laughs> as used to it as I am. If that could make any sense. Only if you could walk in my shoes, it would really make sense to you. But uh, uh, it's always from, you know, um, from fans showing love. Yeah. You know, so it, it's always, for me, it, it always appreciated in a way where it's though like, wow, you, you got that much love for me to be like, out here in the cold or like to wait or to you know shift and rearrange your life and your schedule to be at this place that you just heard i'm gonna be at so yeah i always try to just reciprocate that love for the fans and let them know that you know it's it's much appreciated is there anything that like what's that the craziest thing that a fan has has kind of done it are they, are they like turned anymore. up somewhere <laughs> <laughs> it's just I've normal life fans, high speed chases on the oh highway almost killed themselves i have fans like tiptoe on balconies to try to get on stage uh uh when i was here uh the first time i performed at uh what well, we did four nights four nights where hammersmith right mm -hmm. and uh we actually left like with four trash bags of panties. Like, oh God! <laughs> I hope they were clean. Yeah, Nickers <laughs> everywhere because that I put Ready out and the 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 first song on Ready was Panty Dropper. Yeah. So. At that time, like, everybody was throwing panties and niggas everywhere. So we literally had, so after the four shows, we had four... Did you take them home with y'all? I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know what I did with them at this point. <laughs> <laughs> <That> <laughs> I think we caught some great footage of it. Like, yeah. you know, but you, you can't keep trash bags full of strange panties. No, no. No, you can't do it. Because you just got to hope that they're clean, innit? Just... I mean, you, you don't even want to go into that world of wonderment. 
<laughs> you know, like, has a fan ever, like, got into a, a room with you? You know, like, when, like, in a hotel or backstage, have they ever made it? Yeah, fans are uh, they they're very they're very uh determined from time to time. <laughs> I think uh a lot of fan scenarios that you probably throw out are probably encountered. Like I've had fans sneak up and, and wait in the hallway until I come out or something like it's, it's I, I always think that so like once, you know, you get kind of like past security, past the lobby, out of the lift, into the hallway, then you're face to face with Trey Songs. So, Hi. Look, 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 you can't be drawing out crazy plans like that. <laughs> I'm just letting you know what's going to happen. This, do this, this. I've thought it out. I, I could get to you if I wanted to. Well, I don't know. I'm just letting you know you're never safe around me. You know what I mean? No. I, I, I feel that. <laughs> so how is it performing in, in front of sort of like screaming fans and stuff? Do you, does it, uh, do you get nervous? Uh, I think... Uh, I get nervous still, yeah. I get anxious as well. Like, it's probably a, a bit of, like, nerves and anxiety put together. Uh, you know, and there's sometimes when I'm super calm, you know what I mean? So it's like, it depends on the setting and the situation. Uh, but it's, to to speak on the, the, the screaming fans and, like, just the energy, uh, what's on my mind while receiving all that energy is really, like, trying to sound good yeah of course your <laughs> like, performance because, because, yeah but your heart is racing and everybody's <laughs> hyped and you gotta you know you want to focus and stay inside of the zone of where your voice is supposed to be so that's yeah that's um really what goes through my mom through a lot of it and, do you have like a routine before uh, you go on stage yeah i mean uh my routines change like from tour to tour I, I guess like there was one tour where i would listen to um Marvin Gaye's Vulnerable album yeah. before every show. It's a good album. Yeah, amazing album. That's great that you know that. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Uh, uh, another tour I would listen to, like, DJ Rogers, like, gospel before I went on stage. But I always pray before I go on stage. But uh, the music I listen to is more for, like, vocal warm-ups. I do vocal warm-ups, like, actual um, warming up, like... And like, uh, stuff like that. Something like that. <laughs> Not exactly. It's something like it. Uh, I'm so, trying. Uh, you, you just hit your throat. It's crazy. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so I use the, the the singers that I love and the music that I, I uh, like the like Marvin, DJ Rogers, Luther, mm -hmm. like so many vocalists to before I go perform. Just I sing their songs, sing along. And you have like, is it is it a parody TV show? Because yeah. I thought it was a prank. Like a Valentine's Day prank when I saw the advert. It's like a long, drawn-out prank on the okay, world, actually. Okay, okay. Like, so it's uh, Jermaine the Playboy. Music. Yes. And because I don't I don't know if you need help getting a girlfriend. It's not like Beauty and the Geek or whatever. <laughs> and so tell us a little bit more about that. So it is a prank. It's not... Yeah, it, it was never uh, a real show. Yeah. It's, uh, it's... One of the things I... When I was young, I would love the way that uh, R. Kelly would release his videos. Yeah. Uh, I think before it was really a thing to make mini movies or to, uh, you know, make a Beyonce lemonade or, yeah. you know, things like that. Or like a thriller yeah, or something. Even, like thriller, definitely. Yeah. The beginning of that. But with me being a child and me aspiring to, you know, become what I am today, I would look at the videos and how R. Kelly introduced Mr. Biggs. And then, you know what I mean? It was a whole three years of that that he yeah, like implemented a saga, that into like... videos. And then... Um, Late, years later, he would do Trapped in the Closet, which is something that was, you know, had the world buzzing. Yeah. Um, now, with so many different mediums and so many ways to listen to music and so much music, uh, I think when releasing, we have the ability to do things outside of the box that we, we've never had. Like, I've always been a traditional artist. I release a single, I release a video, I release another single. There's a release mm -hmm. date, three. But within the last three years, streaming and the way people intake music and the way people view uh, music like from YouTube to to all visuals like visuals impact audio more than it ever has yeah so with me having taken a break from you know releasing albums not, not a break musically because I was featured on a lot of stuff and you know uh, it's slow motion came out and I did trigger reload it but mm -hmm. I haven't put an album out in uh, three years almost so I wanted a new look for people to get interested and yeah. I, wanted, I wanted a new thing for people to talk about and one thing I, I i know uh of culture these days i think it's because of so much information is that drama gets more attention and eyeballs than anything definitely right so uh trey songs is releasing a reality show gets every perception whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's confusion whether it's, it's eyes right 
So you bring eyes to what is then the music. Okay. And then once we get to the music, it's still a story. It's still a movie. It's still uh, the vision being dr- played out from nobody else but you to the second single, to the third single, the fourth single, fifth single. Uh, told in a way where, it's, where, it's, where you say, like, it, it, I would need help getting girls, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what people don't understand is that's difficult within itself as well. Just that expectation, that perception. Okay, okay. If I'm trying to get a girl. You know what I mean? You got so many girls, why would you... You need to, me? like, seek one. Right. So, and uh, I show that parallel within the videos. So nobody else but you is explaining just how it's hard to be perceived the way I am as a heartthrob, as this and that, and to focus and give love to somebody when my attention's being pulled so many ways as a man. You know what I mean? Just yeah. being honest with myself and being honest with my fans about, you know, what they want to hear about relationships and what's going on. I understand. I understand. You, you yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It's kind of like distractions, and then you've got like the main right. focus being it could be someone or something that you're trying to yeah. attain. Exactly. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. All right, I've got Trey Songs in the studio. We're going to come back and talk about the brand new album. But right now, let's Tremaine get into Tremaine the album, which I'm really excited to listen to. It's very close. Is, yeah? Very close. All right, we're going to come back. Um, but right now, let's get into some classic Trey Songs. Let's do it. And then. This, uh, we're going to play Heart Attack, I believe it is. That's and then cool. we're going to come back and it's uh, blah, blah, blah. It's Yinka on Capital Extra. I've still got Trey songs in the studio. Are you guys still with me? Yeah. yeah? So there you, you go. The friends get weaker as the time goes. No, the they're first. just chilling. Uh, lift up. Lift, uh, give me some. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> So you have so got. So if you're looking at this, like it seems like there are imaginary people because I look at the cameras, you see nobody. This <laughs> yeah, but seems... you know there are imaginary friends. <laughs> it's working. Like it. <laughs> so you got a brand new album yes. coming out tomorrow. Yeah. All yeah. right. Hours. It was. It's a countdown. T yes. minus however hours. <laughs> yeah, about the three or right. something. Something like that. So are you excited for it to drop? Uh, it's kind of like when you asked the, the question about performing, like I'm excited, I'm anxious, I'm a little nervous, yeah. you know, it's it's like, you know, you uh, you go in a corner and you hide away and you make this music and you protect it and you, you know, it's a secret to the it's world. It's like your little baby. You know, exactly. So when you, when it comes to the moment where you have to give it to the world, it's like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. There you go. Look after you know it. I mean? <laughs> Look after it. Love her. <laughs> How long has it taken you to make Tremaine the album? Uh, it's been about almost two and a half years. Because wow. I started working on it when I was working on my last album. What okay. happened was uh, a lot of the music I was making, I, I felt was uh, for a different project. So then you would have uh, records like Intermission that, that came out. Actually, Wild Trigger was out. Intermission 1 and 2 I actually put out while I was here mm-hmm. uh, two years ago. Uh, I put out a mixtape entitled To Whom It May Concern as well. I uh, put out an Anticipation 3 as well, much features. And it was just all while I'm working on the album, I was finding what musical space I wanted the album to have. So being able to do music and put music out in different ways. And as music is changing, once again, throughout the last, the course of these years and the way people are listening to music, it also changed the way I made. The yeah. Yeah. Um, and I always wanted this album to be a very, very, very personal, very, uh, very vulnerable and very, it, like I named it Tremaine for a reason. That's my birth name. Like yes. A, a lot of people didn't know that before this. Um, so with it calling, with me calling it Tremaine, it's like we were talking about earlier, the mirror, like I'm looking in the mirror and I'm actually having conversations with myself throughout this project that you get to be involved in. And, uh, as I'm releasing the music, I just see a lot of people uh, week to week relating with songs in different ways. And another reason why we wanted to go week to week with music, just to show people the different varieties of sounds. Yeah. Because right? I feel there's so many ways to put an album out now. Like you could just drop an album out of the blue. You could put one single out, drop it next week. I wanted to give people a clear representation of the different sounds that were on the album uh, while still within such consistency and yeah. cohesiveness. Are you... Because this will be probably the most personal like piece of work that you've put out, mm-hmm. does it does it make you feel like a bit vulnerable, perhaps? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, because it's like a bit of you, isn't it? No, it's definitely. It's, it's all of me, actually. You know, and uh, for this album to be more personal, that that's definitely a more vulnerable situation. But as an artist, when you release music, period, when you write music, when you create, when you give something to the world for it to be judged, liked or disliked, like it is a, a big thing, you know. Uh, I think people are so used to it uh, 
that it's like you know whatever but uh and we we've become a very single driven you know audience yeah i think abroad all around the world we we've taken more interest in singles than albums and uh i think it's amazing that as of as of late that there, 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 there's been a resurgence in people listening to uh r&b and whole albums and i think one the big thing in the game was once uh streaming and equivalents came into play and mm-hmm. you started seeing really literally how people were listening to music like right now i could listen i could see who's listening to what song where and when we get the tour dates together for over here because the tour dates are coming oh oh <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, we can actually like look and see who listens where and where I should be. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So is that is that how you sort of work it out with with the data from like streaming and stuff? It makes yeah, well, it makes that, sense. That's my manager. That's another one. That's another, another one. one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they figure it out. So when are you when are you kind of like looking to go on tour? When are you, when do you think you're going to be back, guys? Guys. December, January ish. Threw the far date out there just in yeah, case. Yeah, just like not now, <laughs> innit? But. He's like, he's like, he put me on the spot. I'm gonna say something <laughs> crazy. For- <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. We'll so you were you were saying that um, we are like a single driven sort of like world at right, the moment. Right. You've dropped quite a few videos recently. Yeah, five. and you dropped five, right? Mm-hmm. And when I tweeted saying that I was gonna be interviewing you today, a lot of people want to know about the um, the what video videos? for for I think it's Animal. Animal. Yeah, because that is. It's a bit saucy. Yeah, too much sauce. <laughs> a little bit too much. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's like a little little sprinkle of sauce. Like, it's lovely. Sauce, sauce dripping. <laughs> so talk me talk me through them. Where talk me through the video for Animal first. Well, if I if I could, I just talk you through everything because Animal is actually the last video. Yes, yes, it's the most recent one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, nobody else would choose. Um, you know, it opens up, and you you gotta imagine I've been promoting uh, this false reality show for two weeks. Mm-hmm. In the video, it, it opens up as if it was a reality show, and there's, there's a rewind. And this is why I like to call it like a reality show slash uh, movie slash uh, webisode, whatever. Uh, so coming from the reality show aspect, you see six months before that I was in a relationship. Yeah. And you see the the breaking down of that relationship. You see the relationship stressing the, the love interest. You see the relationship stressing me. And then you see me walking into a room full of women that are willing to do whatever, like, for my attention. You know, they're so happy to be there. It's it's a joyous occasion. It's like they're having a ball. And I keep thinking of this one woman. Keep thinking of her. I'm coming back there. We're going to pretend it's me. Okay, that's great. I mean, you actually kind of resemble. Yeah, a little bit. I'll take it as a a compliment. (laughs) (laughs) Carry on. Sorry for interrupting you. So... So nobody else but you, you see the actual parallel of her leaving my life and these other women entering my life. Mm -hmm. As I think of her and as she gets more distant away from me, I'm walking into another phase of trying to figure out what this is, who I should be with. You know, and that's a cycle, you know, that I, I go through every now and then when you get out of a relationship and then you're like, oh my God, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and so she's still on my mind. The next song, I'm still thinking about her, you know, and going through with the reality aspect being a parallel to my life and with any parody, uh, any comedy, you know, satire, banter, there's reality at the bottom of it somewhere. So with the next video entitled Playboy, which is the cornerstone for this whole project, yeah, this whole Tremaine and Playboy website, uh, the lyrics specifically say, don't know why I'm still kissing girls that I don't love, still stumbling out of these clubs, still I'm just so hard to trust, don't know why I'm still a playboy. And you see me into another phase with the women and the contestants, if you will, mm-hmm. in this house. Uh, so we have a big dinner and I'm, I'm dazed and I'm just in a just a, a, a zone, like dazed out thinking about who the love interest in the video. She's played by a uh, singer by the name of Kreisha Turner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she's all, she's constantly on my mind, constantly on my mind, even though, like, there's so much fun going around. Like, there's women in abundance, and I'm just never really there. Yeah. Uh, so song goes off. Um, I think the videos, this is the third video, and it's yeah. kind of, they take a very, very, very much like a creative turn, whereas it's less of, you know, still playing out the reality show aspects and more of, you know, creativity and, and traditional music videos and, like, abstract. Yeah. 
you see I get into a delusional state and I'm in the video and I'm out with the contestants, the remaining girls. Like I've got rid of however many girls, there's six left. And we're in this club and they're all just on my nerves. They're annoying me. They 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 want to touch me. They want to they want my attention. And in this delusional state, I, I see Kreisha, the love interest in the video. Yeah. And you know, I don't you don't know if she's really there. I leave that up for the the, the viewer to determine. Mm -hmm. Uh but you see us in the moments that we share how powerful it is versus how fabricated the other moments are when you, yeah. you know, you clubbing and you living this life that looks so great from the outside. Uh, so we share this moment and then you get to she loving it where it's still in this delusional state. Her and I are passionately just loving one another and we just enjoying each other's time in this house. And then you see her disappear. So was she really there or was she not? We don't know. Yeah. But Animal is going back to the primal instincts of just, you know, being kind of shocked. You know, the the going back to what's comfortable, going into a primal state of just, okay, cool, she's gone, uh, let's go. Yeah. Let's have a ball. You know yeah. what I mean? So is having a ball what's best for me? Is is that <laughs> what I should do right now? Is, is, but that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's gone. I don't know when she's coming back. And musically, I think, uh, and if you haven't seen the animal video, you should go see it because I'm playing strip poker. Uh, I, I barely have clothes on. Yeah, it's very saucy. That's the I word I'm using. Sauce just just a, little, a second ago. Yeah, yeah, but you know, now I'm remembering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so I do a little airplane thing with some legs. Yeah, um, airplane thing with some legs. It's a <laughs> lovely way to put it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and musically, uh, it's just, uh, if you listen to the different songs, they all have a different thing about them. Definitely, have, yeah. Uh, all have um, R&B core, uh, a lot of guitars, a lot of pianos. Um, and real singing and just a lot of fun in the records that I made. Uh, and I think the balance of the album is very much overall a R&B feel, but you will have records with tempo. You will have records that want to make you move. Uh, but there are those those records that'll make you think, the records that'll make you, you know, want to love, the records that'll make you want to cry, uh, and the records that make you happy as well. So with, like, the way you've described it, it definitely does sound like your life, if you know what I mean. Right. Like, it definitely, like, if not, apart than all of you. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that on the full project there won't be that many features or there's actually only one feature and it's my artist. He's by he goes by the name of Mike Angel. Okay. He, uh I, I released earlier this year a mixtape entitled Anticipation Three. Yeah. Uh and he's on probably eight of the probably about eighty percent of the whole thing. Um and he's from my hometown, very talented. He got his voice is so dope. Uh he's on a song called Crazy Little Games. Uh, and outside of that, I have uh, background vocals by, yeah. uh, like, friends of mine, Rico Love, uh, Justine Darcine, a young lady I'm very interested in, in the Bronx. Uh, but all in all, I wanted to give people just me. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted to tell my story. Uh, you know, I, I started off in, in the game. I wasn't really having a lot of features on my, on my albums. And uh, I think probably when I got around my third or fourth, like, I started doing a lot more of that and uh, just bringing it back to the basics. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm looking forward to hearing it, definitely. I want to thank you for joining me on Capital oh, Lecture as well. thank you so much. You do your job very well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. See, Rob? See that? Mm -hmm. Just now that you've said it, you can't chat rubbish to me ever again. I mean, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were on my side. I'm definitely on your side. I just don't know how things work around here. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> say you got a voucher, you get some credit, and then, you know, I leave and it's another story. Yeah, I'd be like, Trey Songz loves me. Be quiet. I do, though. I do. You're Aww. adorable. Thank you. I love you, too. But, you know, that's because of the animal video. Um, yeah, so animal! Thank you for uh, joining me. We're going to play Nobody Else But You now on Capital Extra. She likes the animal part of me. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Uh -huh. <laughs> Can you please introduce it for our <laughs> listeners? <laughs> this is Trey Songs and you're listening to Animal on Capital Extra.